Okay, can you see it? Yes. Okay. So um, let's say, um, so my name is Kamil Gisewski. I'm based in Poland. Uh, I work at the moment as a DevOps uh, in the role of DevOps. And um, I have 10 years, of, over 10 years of experience in IT. And one thing that might be not related to the work, but uh, it's, uh, it's about me. I spent one, about one year traveling around the world with backpack. So uh, it's easier to, to, to remember what that's what, just one thing about me. And today I would like to tell you a little more about the uh, certification for the Terraform. How, how did I pass it? Uh, what materials I used? Uh, what are the objectives that you should have to show during your exam? And at the end, I will tell you a little more about, about the TF state, that there was a number of questions in the certification about the TF state. So I hope that my, I, uh, my knowledge will be useful, useful for you. So first about the Terraform. Uh, Terraform, it's uh, technology. Uh, it follows the principle of the infrastructure as a code. Basically, it means that whatever you have in the in the cloud, in the past, you just have to, let's say, click the, uh, click things that you want to have in the VM. And uh, now it, you can just put it into the code and every time you will, you will have the same output. This is very useful for the training, for the backup, for continuity management. And Terraform is the technology from the HashiCorp. Uh, the, it, it created the, the Terraform. It, pro, it provides the ability to create resources in the cloud like Google, AWS, or Azure, or also on the premise. So it's not only related to the, to the technology in the cloud, but also on, on premise like OpenStack, VMware. How does it look like? So you create the files that are created in the HCL uh, language. This is how the file looks like. Mm, and you can put all of the resources uh, based on the providers. Uh, so providers are connected with the specific group. Like say, let's say you have one provider for Azure, you have like one provider, provider for GCP. Uh, I was looking for some quotes and I found it on the Twitter about the Terraform. I like Terra Terraform, but it doesn't do that. Oh, they just added the functionality and uh, they don't do why, but it will be uh, it doing this. And uh, neither of them can do Z, but oh, they are doing that with the latest version. So this technology is uh, still improving they are adding a new functionality so whatever you have you had let's say two years ago it it uh, it can be outdated so it's very useful to look uh, look into the terraform when i was starting to prepare for the uh, for the examination um, first what i had to do i i used the software university registration so we have the we have the soft serve. Uh, just one second. We have the, the soft serve uh, website where you can register for the examination in the soft serve university. After registration, you will be contacted by the person from the uh, soft serve university, and they will provide some additional guidance additional materials that, that will be useful for doing the certif uh, certification and your preparation. In next uh, material is the exam instruction. So on our confluence, there is an article, how to prepare for the certification, what will be useful and all of that, all of the useful information that um, that will be useful during the examination. So these are the software materials. There's also official materials. Uh, one of the most important one is the place where you can register for exam. 
and also there are exam objectives. So there is nine exam objectives that I will discuss later on uh, that define the scope for the for the for the certification. Also on the official website, there are there is a number of tutorials that you can pass and you can gain knowledge about the uh, Terraform. Except from that, uh, from that there, are, there is a number of unofficial materials. So they are not created by the HashiCorp, but they provide, uh, they are uh, create, they are provided, they are cre available, or let's say, on the Udemy platform. There are two, uh, there are two courses that you can use that you can use to to improve your knowledge about the terraform the courses were also useful for me i'm using terraform for some time but uh, it was very useful for me to structure my knowledge to make, also i gained some new information also in what uh, in the courses you have uh, some important pointers for the exam what sh you should focus during the during your preparation for the examination and there are also on the UDM platform, there are also practice tests that you can do to test your knowledge uh, about, the, about the Terraform. And last resource, there is a, a book, HashiCorp Infrastructure Automation Certification Guide with uh, all with the information about, uh, with the detailed information about the, about the Terraform. Now uh, I've mentioned the exam objectives. So there is nine points that you will be uh, that HashiCorp created, and they 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 will be used during the check of your knowledge during the, ex the during the examination for certification. Uh, at the end, you will receive uh, a feedback how uh, how much your knowledge uh, match the uh, to this objective so each 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 uh, question is connected with one of the objectives and at the end you will receive a percentage of how uh, how it's working so now let will i will try to go through all of one uh, one of these objectives one by one and i've tried to look in the materials for the examples of the questions and I will try to uh, get a description for, for uh, I will try to explain what's my view for this question and how, what should be the uh, correct answer. So now we have the understanding uh, understand infrastructure as, as code concept. Uh, I've mentioned before what is the infrastructure as a code and let's go to the question which is not an example of infrastructure as a code. We have a bash script stored in a version control system. So bash script, it can be connected with the, the infrastructure, infrastructure or it can be not, but it's still the code. So it's something related with the infrastructure as a code. We have a variable file. This is still a code, this is a file, so it's connected with the code. We have uh, IAM policy. Uh, is, is written in JSON. Still, this is the file, this is the code, so it's connected with, with the infrastructure as a code. And um, an interactive web catalog. So interactive web catalog, that's not something like you have to click and do something on, the, on your desktop. So I think that the correct answer is interactive, an interactive web catalog. Uh, next question, understand uh, Terraform's purpose other than infrastructure as a code. So here's we have the scenario. Your company has been using Terraform Cloud for some time, but every team is creating their own modules and there's no standardiz standardization of the modules which, uh, with each team creating resources in their own unique way. You want to enforce standardization of the modules across enterprise, what should be an approach? 
So create individual workspaces for each team and ask them to share modules across workspaces. That sounds very manual. So maybe there is something different because you have to manually uh, share uh, workspaces. Um, implement a private module registry in Terraform Cloud and ask teams to reference them. Mm, that sounds quite useful because you create one module, everyone is uploading the, the modules to the cloud and everyone can access it. Uh, next part is upgrade to Terraform Enterprise since it's not possible in Terraform Cloud. Mm, private module is accessible for the Terraform Cloud, so it's an uh, invalid answer. And upload the modules in the Terraform public module registry and ask teams to reference it. Probably as an enterprise, you don't want to share a modules with other people. So I think that answer number two will be correct because then it improved the, uh, the teamwork among the teams. And uh, it's, so it's one of the uh, one of the features of the Terraform Cloud. Next question: A provider a provider alias is used for what uh, for what purpose in a Terraform configuration file? Uh, so, provider is um, provider is um, is a, let's say a feature for the Terraform and it's connected with the specific uh specific specific technology so we have that say the provider uh provider for G a separate provider for gcp we have separate provider for uh, aws and provider alias it's uh, allowed to use multiple configuration for the for the provider so you, let's say you have uh, uh, let's say you have the, you need a different configuration from the, for the provider, uh, and this explain this allow you to let's say use multiple regions or multiple um, multiple logins for in your Terraform file. So um, answer number four is the most uh, most useful. Now, using Terraform CLI. So, for the um, one of the features of the Terraform is that you can use Terraform to uh, in your command line, and there is a number of the features that you can add. One of the features is uh, enable debugging. So the question is, uh, James is having an issue with his Terraform code. He wants to enable debugging. How can he do that? Uh, to enable debugging, you need to set environmental variable, and there is an option in the uh, in the Terraform that to use environmental variables. There is the tf uh, there is a prefix tf underscore var. These variables will be used by the Terraform. Uh, these variables will be used as a Terraform to, to, to use for during the files, but this is not what we need. We need to set a TF log trace for environmental variable to enable tracing uh, and so additional, additional log information uh, in the output. I will uh, tell a little more about the TF var uh because you can specify um, let's say there is a number of ways how you can add variables to the uh, to the to the terraform files next uh, next objective is interact with terraform modules so anyone can publish and share modules on the Terraform public module registry. Uh, and meeting the requirements for publishing a, mo a module is extremely easy. Select from the following list all varic requirements. So let's say if you 
create the module, you want to share it with uh, your teams, your friends. Uh, then there is an option to use public registry. Mm. And uh, there is two options here that you need to uh, you need to pass for the for that. So the registry used attack, so we need to specify attack for for the module. Also, it needs to be in the correct three part name format. So we have Terraform provider and the name. So the number the uh, the answer number three is incorrect. So module provider name, and the modules also doesn't need to pass any additional validation check from uh, from Hashicorp. Now navigate Terraform workflow. You have defined the values for your variables in the file vars tf vars and save them in the same directory as your Terraform configuration. Which of the following commands will use these values when creating an execu uh, execution plan? So we have the uh, four options here. We have Terraform plan, we have Terraform plan with the flag var file vars, tf vars. And uh, someone, let's say, would expect that vars tf, so the, the extension tf vars will be automatically added, but that's not correct. This is because there is, uh, mm, there's a specific format required for for the uh, specific format required for the uh, for the variable to be added. So let me maybe open the documentation. Let's say the tf t, let's say the tf vars. Um, there is a spe specific format that it's that needs to be uh, that needs to be added here. So we have Terraform. So files named exactly Terraform TF vars will be added automatically. In our case of the question, the file was named vars.tfvars. So it won't be added automatically. That's why we have to specify it with the with the flag. And there is also another option to add the files with ending dot out uh, with extension dot auto dot tf vars. So this files will be also added automatically uh, to the uh, to your to your Terraform configuration. Next question: Does Terraform refresh command update the state file? True, false. That's uh, it's connected with them implementing and maintaining state. And as you suspect, this is true. But there is additional additional information for that. Uh, recently, I noticed that HashiCorp doesn't recommend using uh, Terraform refresh. And uh, this is because uh, this command, uh, this is because there is a security, uh, let's say maybe not security, but it, there is a danger of using this command. This command automatically refresh the TF state. And uh, there is a danger that if, if the, mm, uh, if the credentials for the cloud doesn't 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 work, the Terraform will notice that there is uh, no resources created, and it will try to uh, it will try to clean the TF state file. So there is an option better to use Terraform apply refresh only. Read, generate, and modify configuration. Uh, 
you have to create a new dependency within your cust uh, custom Terraform code. Which resource meta parameter can be used to ensure that Terraform works on the resources based on the specific dependency? So the Terraform works this way. Let's um, let's uh, go maybe to the example. We have the we have the Azure Virtual Machine, and the Azure Virtual Machine is using let's say public IP address. And uh, there is also a network interface used by the uh, by this virtual machine. So Terraform, on his own, it creates the dependency uh, dependency tree. So it knows which resource needs to be created first, and which which resources needs to be uh, created in the next step. But there is also a, a way to tell. Terraform, which resources should be created uh, first. So the answers, we have dependency block, depends on and wait for. And the answer is depends on, and this will, um, uh, and this will give you the option to manually create the dependency for, uh, uh, to create the resources. Understand Terraform Cloud and enterprise capabilities. So the, uh, let's say for Terraform Cloud, you are trying to log in and which of the following commands is used to save the API token. Of course, according to, let's say easily, according to the docu documentation, Terraform login. Uh, one of the objectives for, the, for passing the uh, Terraform uh, uh, Terraform certification is knowledge of the Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise capabilities. So you need to be familiar with this two uh, with these two products, even if you plan just to use the the free version of the Terraform. Okay, I've told you I've told you something more uh, something about the um, about the objectives. All of that covered some quite an uh, quite a lot of knowledge about the about the terraform now what i would like to focus about uh, on the tf state so what is tf state uh, in terraform we have a file uh, called terraform.tf state and Interesting, interesting thing is that uh, you will have to know there's an option that you will receive a question. Can you give us a name of the tariff or tariff of the state file? So we will, you will have to write on your keyboard the name of the terraform.tf state. So it's good to, to remember what's the name of the file. Mm -hmm. And the TF state contains information how the mm, uh, what what is the current state of the of the of the infrastructure. Uh, it can contain information about the databases, uh, VMs, or it can uh, contains information about uh, in on-premise uh, servers. So let's say we have uh, one of the things that is quite important for the state is work locking workflow. So what I will do, I'll uh, try to show you how the log, uh, how the locking workflow works. I will create few resources. Uh, what I will do, I'll create the backend. Um, uh, a backend infrastructure. So there will be a storage account that later on I will be using for storing of the uh, of the remote stand uh, state. First, let's use Terraform init. So 
it's check, it's using the previously installed uh, Azure, uh, Azure provider. Let's use Terraform plan. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so basically, you are working on one uh, uh, workspace uh, in Terraform, or uh, at, the go at the moment, and... I'm mm -hmm. at the moment I'm for the demo. I'm working at the in one workspace, but you can uh -huh. create mm -hmm. the multiple okay. uh, workspaces. Sure. Yeah. Maybe just to you know, just fine could be you know to mention that before we can. Uh, run with the plan, we can always make sure that we are working on proper, uh, you know. Uh... So works, so work, work oh, work, be, workspace, yeah. Yeah, workspaces can be used to manage, uh, to, to, to use the, the, for the different environments. So let's yeah, say. Yeah, in, mm -hmm. uh, exactly. It, uh, Let's say if you have environment for the development, for staging, for production, you can work on uh, different workspaces. So some maybe it's something similar to the branches for Indeed, and you can switch between the workspaces and switch between the uh, let's say you can switch between workspaces to uh to make sure that you are working on the uh, let's say on uh, on the environment let's say develop so to separate the the uh, the, work the environments, yeah, environments yeah. Yes. yeah thank you yeah that's all so we've created a plan we are creating three res three resources and uh, so we're creating uh the storage account. So Terraform, Terraform plan, it create the, the plan that will be used in the, that will be used to create the resources uh, in the cloud. Mm, so why we wait for the Terraform to uh, create the resources? I remember there was a, there was time that I was trying I was preparing for this demo and I was creating the resources then I was adding some resources manually in the cloud and then I was removing the resources and then at some point I was destroying the, the resource group and uh, with the whole resources and I was waiting waiting it was like three four five minutes and I was thinking why this um, uh, why the resource group is uh, takes so long to uh, to disappear to be destroyed to be destroyed, and then I noticed that there is there are still let's say some resources created manually uh, in the resource group, and that's why uh, it was diff it was difficult for the uh, so the resource group was not was not able to uh, to remove. And then there is a flag for the Azure to um, prevent deletion if contains resources. By default, it's set to false to true, but if you will set to false, it will just remove the resources. So for uh, for demo purpose, I think this this flag is quite useful. So the Terraform is completed. We see that the backend group was created. There is a storage account uh, created here. Uh, with the out, with the and there is output that what we defined. Mm, and I was let's I will try. Terraform apply. Uh, 
and uh, in the files there is terraform tf state log created at the moment it's it disappeared because there is no no resources created but for a while it does the state the log file for the tf state was created and we see that there is the who created the log and uh, when was was created so this contains the this this information is useful this is about the locking there's also an option to there's an option to uh, run terraform apply without the lock but this is quite uh un unrecommended because multiple people can access the state file and then uh, it can be corrupted how the state file looks like so terraform state uh, uh, terraform tf state uh, has information about the um, about the version of the tele terraform uh, resources that are created so we see all of the resources created with the uh, uh, with all of the um, options that were added by you or the resources that were added by default by the uh, by the terraform and the provider so now i'll tell you a little more about the local state remote state and uh, local state and remote state um so the file that i've shown you this is it's created locally and uh, this is useful only for me let's say you are working as a team and you have to share the terraform state with other people you can of course send it by email share it on the drive or something like that but there is a feature for remote st uh, uh, for remote state to to use the remote state and i will use it uh, i will use it for some resources that i've created beforehand so at the moment there is a resource uh, the terraform configuration use the local uh the local local backend and uh, to use remote backend i'll try to use the res the configuration that i have stored in the file so first what i will need is the token this is the, the token i've used uh, to create here changing the configuration I'm using Azure RM And uh, I'll try to run the co the co first to migrate the the current state to the remote. Uh, we need to uh, run the Terraform init, and this creates an error that there is backend configuration change. So if we are moving, this is this command is only useful if there is no uh, TF state created. If you want to migrate the state, uh, we need to uh, put additional flag for, uh, flag for the migration of the migration of the state. So the structure of the command is Terraform init. So we are initializing, initializing Terraform configuration. We've already added backend configuration so of our Azure demo.conf, and there's migration migrate state. 
so we have the information that uh, and we see information that uh, there is immigration from local to Azure RM and we want to migrate. Yes, okay, so Terraform state is created. Let's go to the to our resource in the Azure containers, demo TF state. And we see that the at the moment, the uh, the TF state file is stored in the in the remote uh, location. Uh, one most one of the most important things that I would like to also mention is that you shouldn't change TF state manually because it's created automatically, and every manual integration can corrupt the can corrupt the file. Now I uh, will show you a little more how the locking uh, works for the uh, for the remote state. I'm using Terraform apply and uh, if we'll go to the overview, we see that the list status is locked, and uh, you shouldn't. Uh, and no one else can uh, can uh, act uh, can change the TF state because at the moment it's locked for you. If I will work on that again. We see that the state is locked, and it's locked by by me. And the lock was created uh, today. And the time, of course, is GMT. Okay, uh, so I will go back to the uh, uh, to the local state because it will be use more useful for me. We're back with the TF state, and if I will try to add uh, Terraform apply, the TF state log file will appear here on on the local on the local system. There are a number of the state related commands. Uh, on the uh, Terraform apply, Terraform plan, and Terraform destroy uh, create a log for for the tira, for uh, Terraform uh, create a log for the state. And let's maybe look into the output of the um, Terraform state list. This shows. This gives us information. What are what is the number or uh, what are the uh, resource resources created by the Terraform? There is also Terraform show that use the uh, output from the uh, from the TF state and it created uh, so it's it's more human readable. Uh, there is also Terraform output. And this gives us uh, output of the our current configuration. So here we see that container name, storage account, and there is a 
storage account uh, storage account token. So this token, it's it's flagged as a sensitive information. Telefon by default it checked if the output is sensitive. So it's check if there is a pass something like password token. They can't be uh, showed in the output, and they need to be flagged as the, as the sensitive with the sensitive output. We have this information here. So there is a flag sensitive true. So this is an additional security feature. So TF state workflow, um, we already use. So first, first uh, command is Terraform init. We are initializing the state. Next is Terraform plan and Terraform apply. So we've already um, uh, we've already used that. There is an there can be a difference. Let me just check if. There's a difference. Uh, so the Terraform plan, the Terraform plan has the uh, Terraform plan has additional. Let's say uh, it can be uh, Terraform plan is is creating the plan for the infrastructure change. Uh, it compares the inform. It compares the information of uh, from the. Uh, TF state file with the real uh, with the real information, and uh, the uh, Terraform plan also include the Terraform refresh command. There is and there is a difference what it's doing. So uh, we have the Terraform. Uh, if uh, we would create the Terraform plan with the refresh, with the uh, there's a flag for the uh, there's a, pl a flag for the refresh, and it's uh, it's just compare the TF state with the uh, with the resources, and it's much faster because um, for the complex infrastructure, refreshing of the refreshing of the uh, refreshing of the uh, of the TF state can take a long time. So this is quite useful. In for uh, quite useful plan. So we've already created the uh, we've already created apply, and then let's try to do something uh, something different. We'll make uh, we'll make some manual changes in the infrastructure. Let's go to the VM. Let's change the size of the VM. We'll resize it, and then let's see what will happen. Okay, the, the we've successfully resized from the uh, we've successfully resized the the machine. I'm running Terraform plan, and let's see. There's there was no changes in the in the infrastructure, but we saw that we've changed the. Um, and we've saw that that we've changed the um, the size of the machine. 
So let's try to run the ter Terraform plan, but with, with, without the, uh, the refresh flag. And now we see that there is a change in the VM size. So uh, this is, uh, but it was slower. The Terraform uh, plan was uh, was slower than uh, from the, from the previous command. This is uh, it gives us information what have changed. So it compares the current the current infrastructure first Terraform plan comp uh, refresh the state and then it compare with the current infrastructure. So this is quite important because with that we can notice any changes in the infrastructure that was created manually. What I will do, I'll go back with the. the previous configuration. So there will be a change in the infrastructure and the VM will be, uh, VM will be, so we see that there is one change, changes from the standard um, B1S to uh, standard B1LS. There is still TF state log file. The log is uh, created for the duration of the whole uh, for the whole uh, con for the whole configuration. Okay, so the, the, the operation is completed. We see that again, B1 LS. And VM size is B1 LS. Let's do something different. Let's try to add manually some resources. Let's create test disk. Okay. It's like So we've created a test disk. Let's run Terraform plan with the refresh pulse. So as we susp uh, I'm pretty sure that it, it won't notice any difference, but if we'll plan, uh, oh, so there is the log file created. And if we'll run Terraform plan without, without the refresh, there should be an option that it will uh, it will notice that the disk is created, but no changes were added. So we have we see that there is storage this data, 
we have the test disk one. Now we can see it in the in the TF state. If I will run Terraform apply refresh only, it will update the state file and the disk should be uh, should be visible. But this is the now we are um, now we are uh, managing the you know, we see that the disk is created here but we can't manage it with the terraform and there is also an what we can do, there's also an option to import the resources uh, into the um, in the, the in the terraform so let's say that okay we've created this manually now we need to we want to manage it through the terraform so we the disk is created we added the disk to the uh, we've added the disk to the tf files and so let's run the terraform apply There should be an error to, and uh, it will give us information. Oh, the resource is already, uh, the resource already exists. And uh, we can't, second, I find it inside the file. So we are adding a disk to the to the to the system. And we have an error that uh, the resource with the, the, this ID is already created. Uh, here now we need to use the Terraform import command. And this will import our resource, uh, uh, our resource to the uh, to managing of the of the state. So the st for me, the state file was quite mysterious at the at the beginning because it somehow mix you have it somehow mix the configuration. Uh, what exists in the cloud, what exists in the Terraform. Uh, I hope that what I did, I, the examples that I gave you, uh, explain a little more how this, uh, con how this state file behaves, how you can, uh, how you can manage this, uh, how we can manage the TF state on your own, and uh, how how to use it to your own purpose. Okay, let's wait two seconds for... for the changes to, to be applied. Mm-hmm. 
maybe do you have any questions for um, uh, for the terraform for the certification uh, Uh, hello. Yeah. I have a question about the Terraform import command. Mm -hmm. So please correct me if I'm wrong. So if you created an object in the in your cloud manually, so there is a possibility to import it yes. into Terraform state with this command. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and, that's right. So, and, uh, yeah, so if you will, uh, let's make, if you'll go back to the error that I gave you here, so. There is information in the error message. There is information that a resource with ID already exists. So we can use this ID to the to create the Terraform import command. Mm -hmm. So the same this ID was actually used in the uh, in the ID here in the command. And yeah, thank you. And another question. So for storing the Terraform states, we can use different backends like S S three. ETCD and other, right? That's right. Yes, there is um, a different number of the different number of the uh, of the backends, and I believe that each of them you uh, each one of them use the uh, use the locking feature. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is also an option uh, for to use the um, HashiCorp console and. Uh, I think that this is one of the most secure version because also it provides option to encrypt the file and also use the uh, SSL for communication. Mm -hmm. TLS SSL. Okay, that's great. Sorry. So, uh, and the last question from my side uh, for the Terraform certification, you mentioned at the beginning of the, your presentation that you need to learn how the enterprise part of Terraform works. This is necessary, um, right? Yes, so uh, you need to learn about uh, about the features. So the, you don't need to show how, how does it work, but you need to learn um, the most important features and the difference between the uh, normal version, cloud version, and the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And the courses which we have in SoftServe, uh, they allow us to like get acquainted with the enterprise features to uh, prepare. But, yeah, so the courses provide, uh, let's say, the knowledge. They does, don't give you the access for the enterprise. Mm -hmm. They give you, let's say, a theoretical knowledge. Uh, what's, what's the difference and what's the uh, most important point of focus? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I also have a question. Uh, so there is my question: uh, How can I control and handle rollbacks when something went wrong? Mm, so there is uh, there is one of the things is that the, for the TF state there is always a backup, so it gives you a backup for. Uh, of the what's uh, of the state of of this of the infrastructure that was before. Uh, how to handle the rollbacks? Uh, what they, what do you mean by that something happened wrong? Because each yeah, each pro, each scenario probably probably is different, but uh, for. Um, I think that one of the most thing, most important thing is that you, to use the uh, source control to to manage the to manage the previous the uh, previous versions of the files. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Because there may be some because uh, let's say I'm not sure what what can be wrong with this uh, with the structure, but. Let's say the Terraform it gives the the option to recreate the whole environment. So one of the most important uh, one of the most important uh, options for the Terraform is continuity management. Let's say we have the infrastructure in cloud, 
and at some point there uh, there was someone removed let's say five vms and some resources and terraform will give you the opportunity to actually recreate the whole infrastructure how it was before Okay, so the, mm, so as we see that the import was successful and the changes was also successful. And uh, that was actually my uh, the last part of the presentation for me. So if you have any questions, uh, the cert maybe just give you, the certification wasn't too hard. If you will just look into the uh, the courses, try to use um, Terraform, try to understand what you are doing, then it's quite, quite easy to, to pass.